Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. In this video, I'll review the book Superhuman, The Bulletproof Plan to Age Backwards and Maybe Even Live Forever, a recent book by Dave Asprey. So this isn't Dave's first book, but it's the first book of his that I've read. And I mean, overall, I actually found it quite an interesting read and somewhat entertaining at the same time. And I've made various notes whilst reading it as well. And so the aim of this video is to kind of just discuss through some of the key points and key takeaways from the book and to evaluate my opinions and thoughts on it. There were also a couple of cringeworthy moments, which I'll save until the end. But yeah, I mean, generally, I did quite enjoy reading this book. So firstly, what is this book actually about? Well, the book pretty much covers why we age, but also it covers more how to age what he refers to as backwards and does that through all the practical advice and so-called biohacking to manipulate and prevent the aging process. So then, who is Dave Asprey and why does he have this information? So I first heard of Dave when reading an article about a man who wanted to live to 180 and well, this man is Dave Asprey. And to achieve this, Dave does this through biohacking, a term that he uh, coins himself, which refers to the art and science of changing the environment around you and inside you so that you have full control over your own biology. And for those reasons, that's why he's often referred to as the father of biohacking. But biohacking isn't necessarily cheap, and he spends his money and invests in his health effectively, and this money comes from his company. But the point is, is he's pretty much a human guinea pig trying out different ways to manipulate his own body to extend his lifespan. And obviously this book's very personal because he gives his own experience and the kind of reason why he decided to try biohacking in the first place. And that pretty much stems from his diagnosis of having Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And so most of the science behind these different biohacks is pretty much unknown. And so kudos to Dave for explaining this and his own experiences in trying the different biohacks. And if you didn't know that Dave Asprey was the founder of Bulletproof Coffee, you certainly will by the end of this book, with the number of references. I mean, it's kind of given that Bulletproof is in the title or the subtitle of his book. And yeah, maybe some of the money to, for these biohacks would go back into his pocket, but at least he could maybe invest that money in trying new biohacks to further inform us of his findings. And he also owns the Upgrade Labs in Santa Monica, where many of these biohacks can be performed. So because Dave has, I guess, more of a non-science background than myself, it's a very accessible book to read because it's aimed at, well, it's aimed at anyone really. So let's address the first big question then. Can we all actually be superhuman? Well, one of obvious issue or, or concern is the risk of overpopulation if we're all living to 180 years old. But I mean, Dave's opinion is that if there's equal access to education and healthcare, then there actually would be negative population growth. I mean, whether that's feasible, I'm not entirely certain, um, at least what timescale that would be achieved, I also don't know. But it is definitely worth mentioning. And the other concern that Dave mentions is quite a good point, and that is anyone who wants to be a superhuman being quite selfish. And his opinion is that, well, to be able to do this, you'd need a planet to live on as well. And so sustaining our planet at the same time is of high priority for anyone who would want to be a so-called superhuman. But the idea is that if you live that long, you could pass on your knowledge to younger generations to advance the human race. And so can everyone be superhuman? Well, I think, and I think Dave enforces this opinion, there are all ways that any of us could enhance our lifespan, even if it was by a tiny amount, just a few small changes within your life. And some of these can be done for free, which will be discussed in the book. And obviously reading this book reminded me of the recent book that I read, which was Lifespan by David Sinclair. And so I think there's a little bit of overlap, but it's a very different book to Lifespan. So let's get to it then. How does Dave Asprey reckon you can become superhuman? Well, broadly, he says, the one thing you need to do is remove the things that make you weak. And this is to avoid what Dave refers to as the four killers. So this includes heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's and cancer. And these killers are more the kind of killers of the developed world as it ignores infectious diseases. But one thing that does link these different killers together is inflammation. And that is something that is critical and kind of underpins the process of aging, which is reinforced in this book, but also in David Sinclair's book, Lifespan. 
So within the book you'll learn about how the gut microbiome is tightly connected to heart disease and also look at the impact of having a high sugar diet and the link not only between diabetes but also Alzheimer's disease. So how can you prevent the four killers and become superhuman? Well, you need to prevent the seven pillars of ageing. And so Dave uses this analogy to reinforce the point that you need to maintain these pillars that deteriorate over time and cause the ageing process. And these different so-called pillars of ageing, it's pretty much a different way of thinking about the different hallmarks of ageing, which I've spoken about before. So Dave's seven pillars of ageing include shrinking tissues, mitochondrial mutations, so-called zombie cells, cellular straitjackets, extracellular junk, and also junk that builds up within cells as well. And lastly, the seventh pillar is telomere shortening. So what can you do to prevent the seven pillars deteriorating? What does Dave do? So this is pretty much what the rest of the book goes into and there's too much to kind of mention all in this video so I'll just highlight a few key things. And so first let's look at these zombie cells which is better known as senescent cells. So senescent cells are one of the hallmarks of ageing as well because they accumulate as you age and what senescent cells are are cells that effectively have stopped dividing but are still metabolically active and so some of these senescent cells have a senescence associated secretory phenotype, the SASP, and that can be pro-inflammatory, which is the link between um, senescence and aging. And he mentions in the book about senolytics, which are drugs that basically <clears throat> target senescent cells to, for destruction. And so you can have a combination of desatinib and quercetin or fasetin, which is found in strawberries, seaweeds and apples and cucumber. And in this paper, they identified it as being a senolytic. And by removing these senescent cells, you can improve age related conditions and reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. And the use of senolytics in mice and rats have extended their lifespan as well. So now let's look at what he means by extracellular and intracellular junk. Well, Dave basically refers to as junk as misfolded aggregated proteins and so that links with the loss of proteostasis which is another hallmark of ageing and one disease that is tightly linked to misfolded proteins is Alzheimer's disease where you get these amyloid beta and tau tangle aggregates which are basically just misfolded clumps of protein and so one thing he discusses is the efficacy of taking vitamin D to prevent this misfolding which is based on the research of Gordon Lithgow who studied worms and found that by taking vitamin D, the worms extended their lifespan, which reduced the rate of this misfolding. So without taking supplements, an obvious way to increase vitamin D is just to spend more time outdoors. And according to Dave, if you want to be superhuman, it's best to do this in the morning. And that's because of the stimulation of the circadian rhythm by blue light. And I like this quote by Dave that blue light is the high fructose corn syrup of lighting. And it's true, I mean, the um, availability of blue light late at night is what also disrupts our, sl our sleep patterns. And sleep is very important for becoming superhuman, as we'll discuss later. But light isn't only a bad thing, it can also be a good thing. And he discusses something I hadn't heard of before, which is the intravenous light therapy, which basically stresses cells and has a hormetic effect to stimulate the stress preventing pathways in the cells. And this is by introducing UV light directly into the bloodstream. Well, I couldn't really find too much information about this, so I don't, I can't really comment on how effective this would be, or if it's safe. So I would just stick with walking for now. But the second thing he mentioned was infrared light therapy. And so more is known about near-infrared light therapy as opposed to UV therapy, at least what I could find in the literature. But I still don't know too much about it, and so I can't really comment, but I think it's something that, if there's more interesting research, I think yeah, there could be something there. I don't, don't really know at the moment. But Dave has tried both these therapies and has claimed that he has noticed benefits. So who knows? Another interesting thing he mentioned is the importance of teeth and this whole concept of neurological dentistry. In particular, Dave discusses how a misaligned bite can cause continual activation of the trigeminal nerve, which is like continual activation of the, the fight or flight response, which isn't good for the body. And I don't think that, I mean, there's much more to learn about this, and I think it's very interesting. But again, you know, you have your teeth for life as well. There's something that you want to look after <clears throat> if you are going to live to 180. And then a big chunk of the book actually discusses about diets and what foods you should and shouldn't be eating to become superhuman. 
So firstly, I feel like I couldn't have a video about Dave Asprey if I didn't mention the origin of Bulletproof Coffee. So according to his website, Bulletproof Coffee, aka Butter Coffee, is an energising beverage made with quality fats and high quality coffee beans. But where did it originate from? Well, it came from when Dave was handed a creamy cup of traditional yak butter tea by a kind Tibetan woman. And having drunk this tea, he said, it was delicious. But more important, I felt like it brought me back to life. I was suddenly and remarkably full of energy. Following this experience, Dave then tried to reproduce this in a way that worked for him and henceforth came Bulletproof Coffee. Now, I haven't actually tried it myself, so I can't actually comment on how energising it is, but, you know, um, I'm sure you could read his book or many of his videos where he'll tell you all about it. So, moving on, the next thing we'll look at is fats in terms of omega-6 and omega-3. Now, there's lots of contradictory advice given in many different kind of diet books about what you should and shouldn't eat, but here Dave keeps it quite simple, and simply you should eat omega-3 fats and avoid omega-6 fats. It's simple and it makes sense. So, yeah, it's all about eating the right type of fats. Now, one interesting story that Dave mentions is the origin of cornflakes by Mr Kellogg's, and how actually cornflakes was developed to lower the male libido and so this obviously I thought was quite an interesting story I had no idea about this and it's due to the fact that cornflakes is very high in carbohydrates and very low in fats and this is thought to manipulate and alter the hormone levels in particular for males testosterone but I still like cornflakes they might be bland but they're brilliant Anyhow, another big and very hot topic at the moment with regards to food is its relationship with gut microbiome. So in case you weren't aware, we aren't just made up of human cells, we are full of bacteria as well. But these aren't necessarily bad bacteria, they are good in terms of being able to break down in particular fibre and other things that we can't digest ourselves. And so there's quite a lot of evidence now that links what you eat to what species of these bacteria you have in your gut. And so Prebiotic fibre is good for having a strong microbiome because it increases the amount of bifidobacteria present. And this bacteria has been shown in this paper to be able to reduce the leakiness of the clonic mucus layer, which basically protects your cells from all these bacteria that are there doing their good job. So if these results can be confirmed in humans, there could potentially be a future where we see more frequently microbiome transfers to alter the species that you've got present. So not only do you need to eat well to become superhuman, you also have to sleep well. And so I talked about sleep in the video with the elf picture that you just saw uh, not too long ago and reinforced the point that short sleep predicts all-cause mortality. And so Dave Asprey mentions some tips to help you sleep better and also ways you can track your sleep. But he also says that not only does how much sleep quality you get, but also sleeping position is also important. And one of the best ways to sleep if you want to be superhuman is to sleep on your sides. So why? Well, there was a study done on rats where they found that sleeping on the side improved the glymphatic clearance, which is the system that removes... Um, junk effectively from the brain and this happens whilst you sleep. Well it is at least more effective whilst you sleep and so this helps to remove those aggregates of amyloid beta and reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease, at least that's what it's currently thought. It is currently still waiting human confirmation. So moving away from sleep now and going to stem cells which takes up quite a big chunk of the book as well. And so stem cells simply are cells that continually divide and have the potential to differentiate into lots of different types of cells. And it is currently thought that stem cell exhaustion is one of the main drivers of ageing due to the reduced ability to repair damaged tissue. And so this is why there's much hype about stem cell therapy, which Dave has undergone and so is some of his relatives. And one story he mentioned is a relative who had a damaged heart valve that following stem cell treatment went to the doctors and the doctor went, you have no damage in your heart, it's gone, you don't need surgery. Now, I don't know how many success stories there are for, for these treatments um, or how safe they actually are, but they are available if people are interested. But at the moment, they are very expensive. So what alternatives can you do to boost your stem cells? Well, one piece of evidence that Dave gives in the book is that 
I think it's rats that was fasted for 24 hours showed increased stem cell regenerative ability. So I'm just going to whiz through now the last few points that I made in this book because it's getting quite long. So how to prevent hair loss. Give yourself a head massage because that's known to increase the number of blood vessels and support the growth of your root hair cells. How to prevent shortening of the telomeres. So telomeres are repetitive DNA sequences that are found at the end of your chromosomes that effectively are like the shoe caps that re remain the integrity of the chromosome. However, they shorten over time as a cell divides. And once a cell has divided too many times such that the telomeres are too short that it's dangerous for the cell, it enters replicative senescence. So how can you prevent shortening of the telomeres? So one interesting study looked at life stress in females and their telomere length. And what they found was women who had higher levels of perceived stress had shorter telomeres. So I guess, well, it's not necessarily easy, but one way to prevent that the shortening is to have a less stressful life. But also exercise levels is supposedly a good way to prevent telomere shortening. You can also buy supplements, but again, that's expensive. Now, the availability of scientific support for Dave's advice varies quite significantly between his different practical advice. But one thing I will mention is carbon-60, which he mentions quite near the end of his book, which in a 2012 study, when rats were given carbon-60, they found that the rats had a 90% lifespan increase. Now, this kind of sounds incredible, but actually there was some mishaps within the paper where there was some duplicated data. And actually, there was quite a small sample size used in the study. So it really, I mean, you have to be very sceptical when looking at data like this. And so... Dave does suggest that you could take carbon-60, but there is very, very, very little evidence for it. But if it is true, then that is really interesting. So how to become superhuman then? Well, if we take a look at the bottom line, it's all about having good food, avoiding sugar, having lots of veg, um, don't deep fry foods, or, and use olive oil when you can, calorie restriction to, as we discussed before in the Lifespan book, having the right environment and having moderate exercise and trying to control your stress levels either through meditation or other ways. So as I mentioned at the start, um, there were a few cringe moments that I had when reading this book. One of which was, I'm quoting here, my uh, um, equipment grew in length by more than 15%, which took me about three months to stop doing a double take when I glanced in the mirror. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, they're a bit cringy, but to be honest, they make the book all the more entertaining. So, overall, this was a really interesting book to read, although I feel like you have to take it with a pinch of scepticism and caution because a lot of it, there is just a lot of lacking of scientific data to back any of these practical advices. But for those like Dave who don't really care too much about it, and if there's any kind of hope, we'll just go for it, then sure, it is a really good book to read and contains advice that could add years to your life. So as always, thanks for listening.